Hello and welcome to Celebrity Mastermind with me, John Humphreys. In the spotlight tonight are Omar Jalili, actor and comedian who's appeared on the Royal Variety Performance. His specialist subject, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Charlotte Crosby, a reality television star turned television presenter. Her subject, whales, dolphins and porpoises. Dr Zoe Williams, resident doctor on This Morning, who will be answering questions on Nelson Mandela. And James Haskell, a former England rugby international whose specialist subject is the Harry Potter films. Tonight, our four celebrity contenders will face television's ultimate test of nerve and knowledge. They will have to answer one and a half minutes of questions on their specialist subject and two minutes on general knowledge. And only one of them can go home with the handsome trophy and the knowledge that they are a member of that exclusive club of mastermind champions. Who will thrive under the pressure? And who will crumble? We'll find out. Let's ask our first contender to join us, please. Your name is? Ahmed Jalili. Your occupation? Actor, comedian. Your chosen charity? Chain of Hope. And your chosen subject? Curb your enthusiasm. 90 seconds on that Emmy Award winning American comedy series. Here we go. In the series, Larry David stars as a fictionalized version of himself. What's the first name of his screen wife, whom he later divorces? Cheryl. Yep. In the ski lift, Larry claims he was once a guitarist in a Jewish folk band who played songs such as Gefilte Fish Blues. The band was called Larry David and the... Uh, and the the, 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 the... the Jews. The hipsters. In the episode Interior Decorator, Larry arranges to meet an actress for lunch, but she leaves before he arrives after he's delayed at his doctor's office. Which actress? Diane Keaton. Yep. The young daughter of a television executive asks Larry to give her rare collector's doll a haircut, but she's upset when she realises that the hair won't grow back and Larry is forced to steal another doll's head to replace it. What's the girl's doll called? Judy. Yeah. Larry orders a salad, but then asks for a couple of substitutions. This upsets his friend Cliff, who claims that his grandfather invented the salad. What's the name of the salad? Cobb salad. Yeah. The show is largely set in and around Los Angeles, but in Series 8, to avoid going to a charity event, Larry temporarily moves to a different American city. Which one? New York. Yep. In the series, Larry co-stars in a production of the musical The Producers. What's the name of the blind rehearsal pianist for the show? Michael. Yep. When he donates a kidney to Richard Lewis, Larry briefly dies and goes to heaven, where he meets two bearded guides who expel him back to Earth after an argument. The guides are played by Dustin Hoffman and... Sasha, Sasha Baron Cohen. Sasha Baron Cohen is right. In the Ida Funkhauser Roadside Memorial, Larry accuses a woman of being a sample abuser after she tries various flavours of ice cream before she buys one. What flavour does she eventually choose? Vanilla. Vanilla is correct. You had no passes, Omid. You scored eight points. Thank you. And our next contender, please. I can't, I've, got, I've got to follow that, John. Think positive thoughts. Now, let's begin, then, by asking you your name. Charlotte Crosby. Your occupation. A reality TV star and presenter. Your chosen charity. The Epitopic Pregnancy Trust. And your chosen subject. Whales, dolphins and porpoises. Whales, dolphins and porpoises. Here we go. What oh, term scared. is most generally used for the behaviour that many whales and dolphins display of leaping completely, or almost completely, out of the water and landing back with a splash? Uh, breaching? Yes. Which species of dolphins with the scientific name Tusiops truncatus gets its common name from the shape of its stubby beak and large round head? It's particularly noted for its apparent smile. Beluga whale? Bottlenose dolphin. <sighs> Krill, the tiny shrimp-like creatures found in a huge concentration in Antarctic waters, is a vital food source for a group of larger whales named for the comb-like plates in their upper jaw. Which group of whales are they? Humpback? Baleen. What name derived from Old Norse is given to the family of baleen whales that includes the minke whale and Omura's whale? What, what name? What name, derived from the Old Norse, is given to the family of baleen whales that includes the minke whale and Omura's whale? 
Mr. Cities No, raw cow. Which dolphin is identifiable by its ghostly form and particularly large dorsal fin, as well as a distinctive crease down the centre of its forehead, from blowhole to upper lip? Its scientific name means grey grampus. Uh, 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 Commerson. Risso's dolphin. The so-called killer whale is not a whale, but the largest member of the dolphin family. What species is it? Orca. Yes. Which large species of porpoise native to the North Pacific creates a distinctive fan-shaped splash of water known as a rooster tail when it swims at high speed? It's sometimes called the white-flanked porpoise, and it's named after the American naturalist who first identified it. What oh. is it? No, none of those, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, um, I'm, I'm take all that as a pass, all right? <laughs> Dolls or dolls, porpoise. Right. So I did terrible there. I think I got one. You didn't get one, you had two. You had double what you thought. So there we are. And there's general knowledge yet to come, so... <sighs> I don't think I'll do good at that either. <laughs> And our next contender, please. And your name is? Uh, Zoe Williams. Your occupation? I'm a GP and a TV presenter. Your chosen charity? Three Pillars Project. And your chosen subject? Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela. In 90 seconds, starting now. When he was born in 1918, Mandela was given a causa name. That is a colloquial word for troublemaker. What name? Um, Roli Lala. Yes. In the early 1940s, Mandela worked at a law firm in Johannesburg where he shared an office with a Jewish communist whom he described as his first white friend who seemed entirely colorblind. What was his name? Um, Goa? No, Nat Bregman. Who was Mandela referring to when he wrote in 1985, he is my greatest friend and comrade. I know that he would give his life to see me free. There is no difference between his views and mine. Walter Sisulu? Oliver Tambo. Mandela was appointed volunteer-in-chief of a campaign that organised large-scale multiracial mobilisation against apartheid laws that was launched on June the 26th, 1952. What was it called? The Defiance Campaign. Yes. In 1964, Mandela and several other anti-apartheid activists were sentenced to life imprisonment for planning a campaign of sabotage against the government. The trial became known by the name of the suburb of Johannesburg, where some of the defendants had been arrested. What suburb? Uh, Riverall. Rivonia. In March 1982, after he'd spent 18 years on Robben Island, Mandela was transferred to a prison in the suburbs of Cape Town. Which prison? Paul's more. Yep. In 1985, Mandela rejected an offer from the state president to release him from prison on condition that he renounce violence as a means to bring about change. What was the name of the president? Buffer. That's correct. In April 1994, South Africa held its first democratic elections and Mandela became president. His deputy presidents were F.W. de Klerk and which ANC politician? Walter Sisulu. Tabo and Becky. Ah, oh, of You had no passes, Zoe. You've scored... Four points. Thank you. <laughs> and our final contender, please. And your name is... James Haskell. Your occupation? Former professional rugby player. Your chosen charity? Sebastian's Action Trust. And your chosen subject? The Harry Potter movies. The Harry Potter movies. Here we go. Who played Professor Albus Dumbledore in the first two films of the series? Michael Gambon took on the role after the actor's death in October 2002. Richard Harris. Yep. In the Chamber of Secrets, Harry uses flu powder to travel with the Weasleys to Diagon Alley, but he mispronounces his destination. In which street does he arrive instead? Nocturne Alley. Yep. In The Half-Blood Prince, Ron eats a box of chocolates meant for Harry that contain a strong love potion. As a result, he believes that he's madly in love with whom? Uh, Lavender Brown. Romil Devane. In The Order of the Phoenix, when Harry secretly writes to his godfather, Sirius Black, from Hogwarts, he addresses him by an alternative name. What name? Padfoot. Yeah. In The Deathly Hallows, part two, who uses the sword of Gryffindor to destroy Voldemort's monstrous snake, Nagini, while Harry is engaged in the final struggle with Voldemort? 
Neville Longbottom. Yeah. In the Half Blood Prince, Harry and Professor Dumbledore travel to a house in Budley Babbitton. What's the name of the professor who's hiding there disguised as an armchair? Slughorn. Yes. At the start of the Deathly Hallows Part One, Hermione uses a magical word to erase her parents' memories of her in order to protect them from the danger facing Muggle families. What magical word? Obliviate. Yeah. In the Half Blood Prince, an eerie wizard shop in Nocturne Alley has a vanishing cabinet that forms a passageway through to the room of recording. Requirements at Hogwarts. What is the name of the shop? Borgen and Burke. Yeah. At the end of the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry receives a world-class broomstick as a gift after his previous broom is destroyed by the Whomping Willow Tree. What is the name of the new broomstick? Firebolt. Firebolt is correct. James, you had no passes. You scored eight points. <laughs> So, at the end of an interesting first round on specialist subjects, so let's have a look at the scores. In fourth place, with two points, Charlotte. Third place, with four points, Zoe. Joint first place with eight points apiece, Omid and James. So, now it is the general knowledge round, and if there's a tie at the end of it, the number of passes is taken into account, and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they're tied on passes as well, then there has to be a tie break. So, let us ask Charlotte, to come back into the chair, please, whether she wants to or not. Oh, well, I don't know, John. I'm not no, going to no. lie. I don't this... like this chair. Yeah, well, it likes you. I uh, think please. it's bad luck. We're going to talk about other things first. Okay. Like what you do, cos you've got seven million followers. Yes, John. And, uh, and that, that's a lot. What is it that you do that attracts seven million people? Do you know what, John? I ask myself this question all of the time. I couldn't tell you, cos it's off of the whale facts, because obviously I'm lacking on them. But I was on a reality TV show which was uh, in, like, I think it's, like, 68 different countries in the world. So a lot of them are, are worldwide. A big show that you do is the tattoo one. So the tattoo show is called Just the Two of Us and the concept is two people of any relationship go in and design each other tattoos but they do not see or know what that tattoo is until it's etched on their skin for the rest of their lives. That is a truly terrifying prospect. Mm hmm Have you got any tattoos? Yes. Where? This one's an Irish cladder, and then I've got one just on my thigh, John, but we'll keep that one there. But isn't that awfully painful? Then? Yes, but you know what? In life, John, you have to experience some pain to really appreciate the non-painful moments. OK, Charlotte, talking about pain, let's give you your general knowledge questions, all right? Two minutes of them. Here we go. <sighs> right. A fortnight is how many days? Fourteen. Yes. The Curse yes. of the Black Pearl, On Stranger Tides and Dead Man's Chest are subtitles of three seafaring adventure films in a series that began in 2003. What series? Pirates of the Caribbean. Correct. Oh, God, I'm on a roll. Cry of How's That or How's That is an appeal to the umpire in which sport? Tennis. Cricket. The pop singer JC Nelson won a National Television Award in 2020 for her BBC Three documentary about online bullying entitled Odd One Out. She rose to fame as a member of which all female Little group? Little Mix is correct. A Hindi word that means to press gave rise to a modern English word for soap used to wash hair or a cleansing agent used to clean carpets and upholstery. What is the English word? Aloe vera. Shampoo. A pair of American magicians form a double act in which one with the surname Gillette is known by his first name and the other, who's mostly silent during their act, is known by his surname. What's their stage name? The Charlie Chaplin Brothers. Penn and Teller. In the name of the motoring organisation known as the AA, the first letter A stands for what word? Assist. Automobile. Oh. What's the name for the metal frames usually fitted with 10 or 12 spikes that mountaineers attach to their boots to help maintain their grip while they're climbing on ice or hard packed spikes. snow? Crampons. Which British musician is known as the Mod Father? He was the lead singer with both the Jam and the Style Council. Ozzy Osbourne. Paul Weller. What's the name of the hard white fat on the kidneys and loins of cattle, sheep, and other animals? It's used to make puddings, dumplings, and mincemeat. Um. Um. Um, 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 uh, 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 goose. Suet. A type of patterned woven fabric originally made wholly from silk derives its name from a Middle Eastern city, now the capital of Syria. What's the name of the fabric? Um, um, oh, pass. 
Two new designs of the 50 pence coin, which entered circulation in August 2019, depict a fictional bear dressed in his customary duffel coat and hat standing in front of the Tower of London and St Paul's Cathedral. Which bear? Paddington Bear. Paddington Bear is correct. You had one pass, that um, patterned woven fabric and all that. Damask is mm -hmm. what it's called. Charlotte, you now have a total of six points. Well, I don't think that's too bad, John. Not too bad at all. See ya. Well done, babe. And next, Zoe again, please. And uh, so you're a GP. Yeah. And you do a lot of it on telly, but you also see people in real life. And I wonder how much your job has changed over the years. Um, given that if there's something wrong with us now, we tend to go onto the internet and say, oh, you know, we click in a sore foot or something and it says, you know, whatever, and then we go to you and we say, we know what's wrong with us, I just want you to sort it, and I'm told that you must give me... What... I mean, does that happen a lot? We call it Dr Google, and right. consulting Dr Google can be my best friend as a doctor or my worst enemy, but the worst thing is when patients don't tell us. So they come in, they've been online, they've got some tummy pain, so they think they have something terrible, and they sit in front of you and they want you as the doctor to figure out what their concerns are and what their ideas are and what their expectations are. So everyone's going to use the internet, so I'm not going to say don't do it. Do it, but use a reputable source. Don't jump to conclusions and do always see your doctor just to get it checked out and tell your doctor what you've found. Whilst you've got me, anything bothering you at the moment, any ailments I can help you out with? That is very kind. I do have a badly bruised thigh muscle because I fell over oh. on the West Wales coastal path last week. So right. Um, mm. OK. Yeah. Well, I've got, a I've got a special portion for you. I'll give it to you afterwards. And can I sue you if it goes wrong? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Right, now, look here. Uh, the these are simple questions compared with what you get uh, professionally. Two minutes on general knowledge. Tagliatelle e rigatoni are varieties of what food stuff? Pasta. Yeah. The television panel show 8 Out of 10 Cats began in 2005 with which comedian as its host? Tom Jones. Jimmy Carr. According to legend, a group of sleeping Scots warriors were saved from ambush by a Norse army when they were woken by the shout of an enemy soldier who trodden on a spiky plant which has since become a national emblem. What plant? Thistle. Yeah. Which artist won the 1995 Turner Prize and said in his acceptance speech, it's amazing what you can do with an E in A-level art, a twisted imagination and a chainsaw. Damien Hirst? Yes. What word was added to the Oxford English Dictionary in 2016 and is defined as a form of camping that involves accommodation and facilities more luxurious than those associated with traditional camping? Glamping. Yep. Yeah. The African capital cities of Brazzaville and Kinshasa are less than five miles apart. The two cities stand on opposite banks of which major river? Mbashe. Congo. A style of shoe with a high heel which tapers to a very narrow tip is known by a name that's an Italian word for a small dagger. What name? Stiletto. Yep. Which famous architect is buried in the crypt of St Paul's Cathedral in London? A Latin inscription above his tomb translates as Reader, if you seek his monument, look around you. John Humphreys. Christopher Wren. <laughs> Which musical instrument consisting of tuned metal bars played with hammers has a German name that translates as bell play? Oh, um, a, um... Oh, oh, violin. Glockenspiel. The Duchess of Sussex has the first name Rachel, but is best known by her middle name. What name? Sussex. Sussex. Anne? Megan. Which, oh, gosh. <laughs> which racket sport is played using a net that's five feet above the ground in the centre? It became an official Olympic sport in 1992. A net five feet above the ground... Netball. Badminton. Oh. But you Terrible. have no passes, Zoe, and you have now a total of nine points. <laughs> Thank you. And now, Omid, again, please. And, um, you've been doing some interesting things, working for Prince Charles in various ways, I gather. I was not working for him, but I did um, his 70th birthday party and uh, I was also invited to do his, his private Christmas party for his uh, workforce. They just ring you up from the palace and say, His Royal Highness wants you to perform at his birthday party for his workforce. 
So I, I kept asking how many are there, they never got back to me, so I Googled it. And Prince Charles's workforce numbers 118. That's his private. His private workforce, but it, it, the actual number is 118.3. So I asked the Buckingham oh. Palace officials, I said, what's the point three? They said, oh, that's just people who are part-time, they don't get paid, and there's no <laughs> point to their job. And I said, well, who would that be? They went, that's you. <laughs> and then I did my bit, and then Prince Charles went on and thanked the magicians and our beloved comedian, point three. And that's what they referred to. So whenever they ring me up, they said, um, point three, we need you to come. I said, sorry, what did you call me? They went, point three. I said, you can't call me point three because that's your nickname now. The future king calls you point three. You know how much people would pay to have a nickname from the future king? So that's my name now. I'm point three. Well, good luck. Thank you. Um, two minutes on general knowledge. What vegetable is mashed to make the top layer of a traditional shepherd's pie or cottage pie? Potato. Yep. Ainsley's Ultimate Barbecue Bible, Ainsley's Caribbean Kitchen and Ainsley's Mediterranean Cookbook, a recipe booked by a television cook and presenter. What's his surname? Ainsley Harriet. Yep. What's the name for a tennis stroke in which a player returns the ball before it has bounced on the ground? Volley. Yeah. The title of a famous aria from the Puccini opera Turandot is often translated as None Shall Sleep. What's the title in the original Italian? Um, uh, no, nope. Doma. An art centre which opened in 2000 next to the Manchester Ship Canal in Salford is named after a local artist who spent much of his life in the city. Which artist? Lowry. Yes. In the classic version of the board game Cluedo, the character represented by the yellow playing piece is Colonel Who? Sanders. Mustard. A Grammy was awarded for Best Disco Recording on only one occasion before the category was discontinued. Which song, sung by Gloria Gaynor, won her that 1979 Grammy I Award? Will Survive. Yep. What were the surnames of Michael and Thomas, who became business partners in Leeds in 1894? Their penny bazaars grew into a major high street food and clothing chain. Blinkley. Marks and Spencer. Oh. Bondi Beach, a popular attraction with both surfers and tourists, is an area of which Australian city? Sydney. Yep. The DC Comics character Arthur Curry rules over an underwater kingdom and is played in a 2018 film by Jason Momoa. How is this superhero better known? Aquaman. Yeah. What alternative name for the horned rattlesnake is a reference to the way it propels itself forwards in repeated loops to avoid prolonged contact with the hot desert sand? Mm, they were writhing erotically. The sidewinder. William Jefferson Blythe III is the birth name of an American president born in 1946 who chose to adopt his stepfather's surname. What surname? Eisenhower. Clinton. What word from the Latin for rope is a name for a type of cable railway used to travel up and down steep hills in counterbalanced carriages? Let me see. <laughs> well, don't take too long. <laughs> A flailed knot. No, it is a funicular railway. I would have got that. Yes, I know, <laughs> I know. However, Omid, you have now a total of 15 points. Great, thank you. And finally, James again, please. And James, as if it weren't obvious from your appearance, you are... A uh, highly successful rugby player. The peak of your achievement? Uh, I think for me, probably winning the Grand Slam uh, in the Six Nations with England was pretty special. The game's changed a lot, hasn't it? I mean, look at you. You are a very big bloke. There are a lot of very big blokes, not just in the pack, but all over the field now. Um, and that makes it a more dangerous game and more challenging for youngsters. Yeah, look, I think when I first started, there was a big distinction between the backs and the forwards, for, you know, but now you get wingers as big as, as big as forwards. You know, I played with a winger at uh, Northampton Saints who's 130 kgs, and that's bigger than most of the, the forwards. So there's a, there's a real difference now. But I think, you know, rugby's trying its best to, to keep it safe, but it's still a fantastic game. You uh, auditioned for a Harry Potter movie. Yeah, I did. You know, when I was younger, a friend of mine was doing the, the, the production. He contacted me and said, would you like to audition for Harry Potter? And I have always had a struggling actor with inside myself. I thought if The Rock can make movies, uh, Dwayne Johnson, then maybe there's an opportunity for another meathead like myself. <laughs> but unfortunately, when I went on to, to set, uh, apart from being extremely wooden in my acting, uh, I'm not sure I would have looked quite the part sitting next to, you know, Daniel Radcliffe and, and yes. Rupert Grint. They might, I'm, I'm probably better 
auditioning for Hagrid, possibly, or, <laughs> or Cave Troll number two, as opposed to an actual actor. <laughs> right, James, now this is a pretty close contest, because you have eight points and the score to beat is 15 if you are to stop Omid walking away with the trophy. Here we go. What general name is given to the huge reptiles that roamed the Earth for millions of years till the end of the Cretaceous period? It comes from the Greek for terrible lizard. Dinosaurs. Yeah. The tin man who wants a heart and the cowardly lion who's in search of courage are characters in a 1939 film. What one? The Wizard of Oz. Yep. Which organ of the human body controls the nervous system and intellectual processes such as thought, emotion and learning? The brain. Yep. In darts, players must stand behind a line sometimes called a toe line or throw line. What's the more usual name? Okay. Yep. What metric unit of measurement is equal to just less than 1.76 pints? The, um, uh, litre. Yep. Castaways on the long-running radio programme Desert Island Discs are given a copy of the Bible and the collected works of which English dramatist? Uh, Shakespeare. Yep. What word for an ornamental tablet attached to a wall to commemorate a famous person or event is also a term used in dentistry plaque. for the sticky Vilma bacteria that forms on teeth. Plaque is correct. Which group had their first UK number one single in 2002 with Freak Like Me? They went on to top the chart several times again with songs such as Hole in the Head and Push the Button. Atomic Kitten? Sugar Babes. A classic cocktail made from whiskey, vermouth and Angostura bitters shares its name with one of the five boroughs of New York City. Which one? Man Manhattan. Yeah. Learner drivers in the UK must attach L plates or in Wales D plates to the front and rear of their vehicles. The letter must be what primary colour? Red. Yep. A hidden feature in computer software or on a DVD, often included as a joke or a bonus, shares its name with a confectionery item given to mark the festival at the end of Christian Holy Week. What name? Uh, extras. Easter egg. Which single digit number is considered particularly lucky in Chinese culture because that has a very similar pronunciation to a word for wealth or fortune? Uh, eight? Yeah. At the March on Washington in 1963, the American civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. delivered a famous speech, commonly named for a four word phrase that was repeated within it. What phrase? I have a dream. Is correct. James, you had no passes, you've scored 19 points. Well, well, let's have a look at the final scores in fourth place with six points, Charlotte. In third place with nine points, Zoe. Second place with 15 points, Omid. First place with 19 points, James. Which means that James takes home the trophy and is tonight's mastermind winner. And James, what I want to know is how this massive victory tonight compares with the Grand Slam. It's right up there because I look like I shouldn't even be able to tie my shoelaces up or spell <laughs> my name, so I'm quite pleased. We'll leave that one resting. Congratulations, and you don't have to be a celebrity to take part in the regular Mastermind programme. If you would like to appear in the next series on BBC Two, you can apply online at bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind, and you can follow us at Mastermind Quiz. Either way, do join us again next time for more Masterminds, and thanks for watching. Goodbye. People who, who follow me on social media might feel like I'm a bit self-obsessed, but actually I don't. My house isn't a shrine to, to achievement, so it may actually go on my uh, office desk. Um, but a lot of things are sitting in boxes, like my, my Grand Slam trophy and my Tour trophy and stuff like that. So I, I may put it out. Well, my mum, I think, might like it as well. She'd get very upset that I leave, I leave everything out and don't put anything on display.